It begins on a boat with two fishermen drinking together. One of them starts talking of mermaids. The other one, Stanley, is curious to know why mermaids have hair if they live in the water. His companion answers that it could be the same reason why walruses have a mustache. Then he says mermaids are not sirens. They have been spotted for 100 years around these waters. If they wait long enough, they might be able to see one. Maybe they are worth a fortune, he says. Once he mentions cutting the tail off a mermaid, Stanley asks why they should do that. His friend says no one knows how strong mermaids are. He reasons that if they have survived this long, they might know how to escape through the net. Cutting off their tail would make escape impossible. The man's idea is to sell the mermaid in two pieces. It doesn't take long for both of them to agree to partake in this endeavor. After that, the scene changes to something much more cheery to contrast with the gloomy opening. Dr. Bayer rides on his boat, periodically looking through his binoculars. Time has passed, and we see the two fishermen again, sitting on the boat's deck. The older one tells Stanley to turn off the engine, to not scare the mermaids. After doing so, he tosses some small metals into the water for some reason. Perhaps it's to attract mermaids. Soon enough, their fortunate moment arrives. They catch something. Dr. Bayer hears the activity from a distance, which prompts him to look their way with his binoculars. Someone gets caught in the fisherman's net to get pulled out onto the deck. That someone happens to be the mythical mermaid. Bayer looks at her, not believing his eyes. The doctor has to take off his sunglasses to properly observe such a wonder. The fishermen lower her onto the deck. She shows how strong her tail is by making a box fly several meters after slamming it. Crawling to the edge of the boat, the mermaid tries to escape. But not having legs makes that a daunting task. At that moment, Stanley strikes her with an axe. His friend comes to help, yet she shows them how tough she is. Stanley gets rope to start restraining the legendary creature with it. While the rope is tied to his arm, the mermaid manages to escape. In doing so, Stanley gets dragged along into the water. She swims along, with him following. The man is powerless in the mermaid's natural environment. Bayer observes this chaotic situation, perhaps wondering what should be done. The fisherman on deck uses his shotgun to fire at the mermaid. However, he accidentally ends up shooting Stanley instead. Afterward, he throws the net into the water in the hope of catching the Lady of the Sea again. Lucky for him, she falls for his trap a second time. The man pulls her up and screams in frustration. Meanwhile, Bayer has decided he can't remain a mere bystander in such a situation. So he jumps off his boat to start swimming. While the mermaid is restrained in the net, we see Bayer climbing onto the fisherman's boat. She sees him before he hides. Another strange aspect about her is that there is a key tied to her hair. The fisherman walks up to her with his axe. He starts hacking at her tail with it, making her give off a high-pitched scream. Taking a break, he enters the room where Bayer is hiding to place his axe near him. Unfortunately, the doctor does not use this opportunity to save the mermaid. Soon, the wicked fisherman collects his axe to go out there again. All Bayer does is keeps watching. The fisherman achieves his desire of severing the poor mermaid of her tail. Her upper half falls onto the deck. As the cruel man drags her away, she looks at her hanging tail in disbelief. She doesn't understand why anyone would do this. The man also sees she has something on her wrist that looks like it could be valuable, so he takes it off to pocket it. Following that, he throws his caught prize into an area with several lifeless fish. Then he enters the room where Bayer is hiding to point his shotgun at him. Bayer tells him he's a psychiatrist. The fisherman's concern is why he's on his boat. The doctor tells him that he is an interested buyer in the mermaid. Once he says that, the fisherman states he wants $5 million for her. That makes Bayer say that he's not that rich. He offers him 10 times less instead. But that is too low for the fisherman. The number they agree on is $1 million. When the doctor asks him why he cut off her tail, the tail falls into the water as if being mentioned affected its ability to move. That makes the man with the gun go out to look at it floating beneath him. At that moment, Bayer slams him on the head. Afterward, he takes the shotgun to finish him, yet the weapon is out of ammo. He resorts to using the axe. Now that he's the man of the boat, he opens the hatch to look at the mermaid. For some reason, he splashes water on her before closing it again. The next scene shows us something very different. We are now inside Dr. Bayer's facility for women. There are several of them there. Before the focus lands on them, our attention gets brought to two guards. One of them asks the other if there was an insane asylum there. It seems to be new. The veteran guard tells him there was one there, before the psychiatric facility was built. It even still exists beneath them. A sudden noise then startles them. Within the facility, we observe something about as strange as the mermaid. There is a ghost girl there, whose appearance is transparent. Returning to the guards, the veteran guard tells the new one that one of the doors in the building has steps which go down to the weirdest basement. After that, the ghost girl comes over to the group of girls. She speaks to one of them, June, to tell her she thinks there is a ghost in the bathroom. Supposedly, June is the only one who can see and hear her, pretending that she didn't hear her. June just tells the others she thinks there is something in the bathroom, like it's her original suspicion. That makes the girls grab whatever they can to use as a weapon before venturing there. Their counselor tries to hold them back by saying not to engage in June's fantasy. She goes into the bathroom first to tell them it's the new girl. She also says the girl's behavior will not make her feel at home. In the next scene, Bear sits in his office, looking at his computer. On it, there are pictures of the mermaid, along with how many days have passed since he encountered her. 
we learn that a respectable amount of time has gone by. As we keep shifting through successive dates, we see the mermaid has grown a cocoon in place of her severed tail. On the 63rd day, her cocoon starts peeling off to show that she now has legs. At first, they were very thin, though eventually, they became fuller. Other notes are written there, like the mermaid's inclination to only eat fish. The last statement we see is that Bayer has decided to move her off the boat to his facility for further study. The girls hear her high-pitched screaming. The ghost girl walks to a pool to see the mermaid there. The ghost's presence scares her, making her enter the water. Apparently, June isn't the only one who can see her. Then the ghost talks to June about her. She says the new girl's legs don't work. We also discover the ghost is ignorant about being a ghost. June tries to tell her, but she doesn't listen. Soon, one of the girls comes to June, rudely telling her to stop talking, because it looks like she's talking to herself. Later, the nurse Sandra tries talking to the mermaid. Of course, the uncivilized mythical being is incapable of answering her. The ghost girl is also there, trying to speak to Sandra. However, just like the mermaid can't respond to Sandra, Sandra can't respond to the ghost. The ghost girl, unfortunately, interprets this as her being ignored. Shortly after, the mermaid takes the jelly toy on Sandra's pen and tries to eat it. She mistakes it for an urchin. It doesn't take long for her to realize it's not edible. After that, Sandra removes a covering to reveal an aquarium. It scares the mermaid. To calm her, the woman shows her a basket of toys. One toy in particular interests her. She crushes it in her hand. We see the crushed result is a mermaid. Subsequently, the new girl starts showing her something with her hands. It makes Sandra realize she knows sign language. At another time, the ghost girl brings the mermaid a wheelchair. She looks at the ghost in fear, which makes the girl cover her with blankets to make her feel safe. Then a man arrives, by the name of Dr. Miller. He inspects the mermaid while she's in the shower. To him, it's obvious she has experienced a traumatic event. The next scene has all the girls sitting in their group session with Dr. Miller. The mermaid is there, taking someone's glasses before crushing them in one hand. She starts using her hands again, yet Miller says her sign language is cryptic. Trying to interpret it, he says she is telling them there is a girl in the room which none of them can see. At that point, June says she can see her too. The mermaid starts mentioning pirates. Those are the people she claims to have learned such communication from. They stole her species from the sea generations ago. According to her, thousands of girls are born on land, who have no idea their genes go back to an ocean resident. This is such bizarre information to Miller that he simply doesn't understand her, even though she's making simple statement. This is when Sandra tells him the girl thinks she's a mermaid. That causes one of the girls to ask why she is bipedal. She informs them all that it happens once they are forced to live on dry land, or if their tail gets cut off. Afterward, our vulnerable mermaid says she will lose her life if she doesn't return to the ocean soon. Following her revelation, one of the girls, Reyna, goes over to the mermaid to spit on her and lets her know she hates her. She also tries to seduce Miller, which makes the man try putting on his glasses. Much to his chagrin, they are the ones the mermaid crushed. Later, the girls talk about being mermaids in their room. Reyna says they should ask June's imaginary friend for her thoughts on the subject. Such words make June cry. Reyna shows just how much of a bully she is by making the girl put a pillowcase over her head. The bully informs the mermaid that that is what happens when one lies. The ghost girl comforts her by saying she believes her story. Later, the guards try to take the new girl away, but she fights back. So they resort to using stun equipment that allows them to place a straitjacket over her. Bayer wants to put her into the lower asylum. He tells the guards she needs isolation. However, they are too scared to go there. The psychiatrist has to do it alone. His entering the place shows us the area is full of water. He has to drag the mermaid through it. Meanwhile, the girls wonder where the new girl was taken. They want to investigate. The one who decides to do that is Linda. In the asylum, Bayer tells the mermaid that he told her not to give away their secret. That is probably the reason why he placed her in the padded cell. Along with her is the ghost girl. We then see Linda walking around the facility, until she runs into Bear. She tries to make an excuse for why she's walking there, though the man knows her intention. He also tells her it's okay for her to go down there to look at the new girl. Once she enters, the doctor closes the door on her. While she searches, Bear watches her on his computer. The ghost girl yells out that they are inside the cell. Of course, Linda does not hear her. She looks into another room, where another patient comes at her. Scared, Linda backs away. It allows her to stumble upon a floor door. She enters and steps on corpses there. For some reason, a frightening dog is there in the dark. What kind of bizarre place did she enter? Whatever it is, it seems like it's her last one, because the dog claims her. Bayer sees all of it unfold before him on his monitor. We see how awful he truly is, because he just makes a sarcastic comment while watching it. Soon, darkness befalls the asylum, making the ghost girl scared. By her strange biology, though, the mermaid happens to emit light around her head, which looks like an aura. On the next day, the ghost tells June about it. She thinks the mermaid is capable of bioluminescence, like the deep sea fish. Afterward, Bayer watches how the mermaid crawls on the stairs with her straitjacket on. She's a survivor, he says to himself. Yet we are left wondering how she escaped her cell. Supposedly, it had to be done by the ghost. The mermaid sits in her wheelchair, but soon falls from it. Trying to walk, she struggles. Thankfully, Sandra is there to help her. She puts a white jumpsuit on our wonder girl. 
In the girl's shared room, she breaks the glass to escape the facility. Since she was able to do it, why didn't the others? They all run into the woods. In the meantime, Sandra talks to Bayer about Linda's whereabouts. He lies that she's in a nice place now, thinking that he means she's out of the facility. Sandra expresses confusion as to why he doesn't tell her where she is. But the deceitful man says it's not professional to keep in touch with ex-patients. The phenomenon they can both agree on is that the mermaid is making good progress with her walking. Back in the woods, the girls watch the new girl stand in the water which neither of them wishes to enter. The music tells us how at home she feels by standing there. It doesn't take long for the girls to decide they have to go back. Reina and the ghost are the only ones that stay there. The bully insults the mermaid again. As the seconds pass, Reina thinks the girl will catch pneumonia by standing in the water. Despite the negativity she showed her earlier, she comes to the girl to help her. She stumbles in the process of doing it, though the kind mermaid catches her. At dawn, the two girls are still there. Searching for the new girl, Reina can't find her. So she starts going back. Then the ghost girl finds the mermaid lying somewhere in her mermaid form. She wants to get her out into the ocean. She also realizes the reason her tail didn't grow back in the pool was because of the chlorine. After that, we see Bear riding with Sandra. They are fortunate to see the mermaid in a wheelchair ahead of them. Bear decides to drive into her during the daylight, not considering that someone could see it. The first thing he checks upon stepping out of the car is his bumper. Sandra exits too, finally witnessing the mermaid in her true form. She understands now that she didn't lie to them with her story. The next scene has everyone at the facility again. A nurse tries to inject the mermaid with a sedative, yet the mythical being uses her tail to slam her away with force. In the girl's room, we see they are being kept locked inside unwillingly. On top of that, their window is being covered with boards to prevent further escapes. As the mermaid is being restrained, the nurse she slammed down thinks her neck is broken. Shortly after, the girls observe the mermaid being taken away into Bear's car. After being placed in it, Bear knocks out the guard. This causes the girls to lose their calm. Sandra comes to their safety and instructs the man to keep boarding the window. She informs them that Bear isn't going to let anyone leave the place alive. It's the only way he can keep the mermaid. Soon the man enters the building to try to get into the girl's room. Sandra wants them all to stay quiet. One girl, though, is about to lose control. It takes two girls to hold her with their support. Soon enough, the wicked man walks away. Eventually, a staff member quietly enters his room. To her dismay, he sits at his desk, already looking at her, then he abruptly shoots her. Luckily for everyone else, Bayer's gun jams due to that one shot. But we have to ask ourselves, all this, for a mermaid. We then observe the girls evacuating from the facility. Bayer walks into the washroom, sensing a girl hiding behind the shower curtain. So he uses his other gun to fire away. For some foolish reason, one of the girls from outside runs into that washroom because she has to use the toilet. They truly are insane, especially since Bear is nearby. Following this, a music box starts playing somewhere, prompting the girl to pose like a ballerina. Bear points his gun at her, yet he's out of ammo. The girl says a guardian angel is watching over her. Now he takes out his taser. He shoots the wall instead. The girl believes he missed. However, it was likely intentional. She thanks her mom, believing her to be the guardian angel that's protecting her. Soon enough, she gets electrocuted. Because the taser Bayer shot reacts with the blood on the wall, that connects to the blood the girl stands on. Afterward, Bayer enters his car. Ghost Girl is there, to assure the mermaid that she won't leave her. As they ride, the Lady of the Sea emits a black substance from her mouth on Bayer. He has to stop driving to look at her. Tasting it, the man says it's ink. He keeps driving, like it isn't that big of a deal. Eventually, he arrives at his boat. Inside, he restrains the mermaid in a room. He wants her to know he's sorry that she is feeling so sick. He even asks if she wants some cough syrup. Furthermore, the man mentions that his life is over because of her. Of course, we know she has nothing to do with the mistakes he chose to make. The evil man has to blame someone else. Then he informs her that he's going to do what he wanted to do since he saw her, cut her open with a saw, to observe what he calls, her fish parts. The situation starts looking more hopeful when Sandra arrives by taxi with the girls. She comes out and instructs them to stay in the car. Entering Bear's boat alone, she cannot find the mermaid. This saddens her, so she sits down. A book near her reveals that a girl went missing because Bear kidnapped her. Further pages show her being lifeless. This disgusting information angers Sandra, to the point of tossing away the book. Suddenly, a Sandra hears the mermaid's high-pitched scream. She thinks she heard it behind a bookcase, causing her to start moving it. After tossing out most of the books, she notices there is one that remains stationary. Moving it proves the book to be a lever. That opens the door to the mermaid. Sandra enters the room with a gun in her hand that she found mounted on the wall. It frightens her to see Bear in the mirror. But she is the one with the gun. Her fear is nonsensical. In the taxi, the girls hear a gunshot, which prompts them to say they need to help Sandra. We see that she only shot his hand. The mermaid helps her by bringing the man down while holding him by the face. Soon enough, the girls arrive to see it all. They help free their mermaid friend. Once free, she goes through an opening in the boat to become truly free by entering the ocean at last. However, her freedom contrasts with the opposite state of the girls. They cannot open the door because it's jammed. To make matters worse, Reina informs them they are sinking due to the hole in the boat. As they wonder how they will escape, Bayer gets up to knock one of them into the water. The tension is ever-growing. 
He holds the girl there, attempting to drown her. Fortunately, the mermaid returns to fight the doctor. There are moments where he has the upper hand, yet he ends up losing to the resilient mermaid. Then we witness how the boat is sinking to a critical degree. The mermaid uses her tail to break the roof, after slamming it several times. That power allows everyone to escape to the shore. Their victory, though, does not come without its defeat. The girl who bear was attempting to drown lies lifeless on the shore. Reina was particularly fond of her, so she is devastated by such a loss. June tries to comfort her, by saying the girl is with her brother. She perceives her ghost nearby, even though we don't see her. The mermaid crawls to the shore as well. She crawls to all of them and uses one girl's lipstick to sloppily apply it to the girl's mouth. One of them says that by doing that, the mermaid is expressing her gratitude. Following this, Raina reminds the mermaid what she said during their group session, that there are girls who are mermaids, but don't know about it. She mentions this because she wants to know if any of them are mermaids. The question makes our mythical girl point to one of them, June. Now we understand that mermaids can see ghosts. To this discovery, June smiles in a time of sadness. While the mermaid crawls back to be reunited with her ocean, the ghost girl comes over to her and cries. This makes her friend speak to her using sign language. Sadly, the ghost doesn't understand it. One of the girls says that the mermaid is saying she will always feel you. She probably doesn't see the ghost, she's just interpreting the sign language to everyone else. The mermaid then returns to her home in the ocean, while the girls watch her swim away. Even Reina is sad to see her go. The final moment shows us Bayer floating alone in the water. The repulsive man is alive, yet not for long. The mermaid pulls him into her natural environment to finish him off for good.